So one other important element of your polish phase is your transitions. And when we talk about transitions, we're talking about characters switching from an inactive to an active state, going from a motion to a pause. It's concepts that animation students already learn very early on in their training. Mm -hmm. your, uh, your transitions are things like anticipations, overshoots, slow ins, and slow outs. Okay. Very familiar concepts mm -hmm. to animation students. But how you handle them in this polish phase can really determine whether your animation feels stylized or realistic. Now, one important part of transitions is choosing which transition to use. If you've got a character, say, who's about to go into a walk or a step, mm -hmm. do you use an anticipation or do you use a slow in? And if you're working in really cartoony animation, mm -hmm. you might want to use an anticipation, a big broad, yeah. you know, yeah. building up some, some force and, and going forwards. That might not always be the right choice for, for realistic animation. It really depends on the energy level that's, that's being used. If it's a very broad motion, if you've got a realistic character who's going into a big punch or something, mm -hmm. then absolutely an anticipation might be the way to go because you need that, that big counter force to, okay. to drive the action. But if you've just got a character who's going into a step or, or into a simple motion, our bodies are really pretty energy efficient. And if I'm going to pick up this cup, if I'm a cartoon character, I might do a big anticipation and come yeah. and grab it. But if I'm a realistic character, chances are I'm just going to ease into that motion okay. and, and, and grab the cup with as little energy as possible. So you have to keep that in mind when, when you're dealing with realistic characters, that they're, they're not always going to have these, these exaggerated anticipations. Another mistake that people often make with anticipations is they oversimplify their anticipations, meaning I've got a character who's about to make a jump, say. A good example would be this ogre who's, who's jumping off the dragon here. So I've got a character who's about to go upward and forward, right? That's, okay. that's the motion he's about to do. I think maybe an initial animator impulse would be the anticipation for that should be a mirror image of that action. So if I've got a character who's going up and forward, I would anticipate by having that character go down and back, right? It's a, it's a mirror. Yeah. That's not really always the way you want to handle it. And anticipations can actually have more complexity to them than that. You can see his hips shift back slightly and he drops down. I feel like this anticipation is a little too simplistic in this case. Okay. So in the polish phase, I'm going to go in here and break this up a little bit so that He's, he's performing different types of anticipation on different axes, which sounds complicated, okay. but all it means is that on one axis he's going to be anticipating and on one axis he's going to be slowing in because okay. I want to give him some forward momentum. So okay. what that's going to do is it's going to give me more of a, a, a lead in into my action where I'm flowing into the jump more like this which I think is a more, a more natural way to get into a, a, a broad action. So if I were to make this change to my animation now, instead of dropping him back here, when I look at my curve, I can, I can very clearly see that, that current sort of backward movement that I have him doing. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to do that anymore. I want to have him move forward instead. Since he ends up at this spot, to give him somewhere to go, I think I'm actually gonna gonna alter this by taking his forward translation down in this section. So I've pulled down this part of the curve so that he's starting a little bit further back. And now has somewhere to go when he goes forward. So I think something more like this would, would work. The main thing to remember is that transitions are not a default construction. You know, yeah. they're, they're, they're always going to exist in animation. And it's just important to be very thoughtful about how you use your transitions and to use them to sell the idea you're getting across.